Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for another Hamshack chat. In this video, we'll be taking a look at doing Morse code on the new ICOM IC7760. We'll cover basic setup and a few neat features included on this rig. Before we move on, I need to tell you that this last weekend was the Dayton Hamvention. As I walked through the different vendors, I was approached by many of you letting me know how much you appreciate these videos. I've been in a bit of a funk lately and found it hard to really get motivated, but these comments really picked up my spirits. And as soon as Hamvention was over, I resolved to finish what was in my inbox and get back into the swing of things. So I thank each one of you who approached me for that. As always, please feel free to add any questions, concerns, corrections, suggestions for future videos, or just a friendly remark down in the comment section below. You have any comments for me? This is the back of your remote head used with the IC7760. We're gonna look at making some connections back here. Now I've placed for demonstration purposes, my keyer up here on top. This is a paddle. That's gonna get plugged in right here where it says electric keyer. We're also gonna plug in an external keypad and we're gonna connect a mouse and a keyboard in these USB slots. Now I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the connectors a little bit better. Now we're gonna start by plugging in our paddle. Uh, you can also use a straight key with this and I'll show you the differences. This uses a 1 8 inch tip ring sleeve and that's a little difficult to see here. So this is the equivalent in a quarter inch. So you can see tip ring sleeve. So this is gonna go in here into the port that says electronic keyer and just plug that in there. If you're using a paddle, you're going to use a tip sleeve, which is this. So again, this is a quarter inch version and just used for illustrative purposes in this video. Next, we're going to plug in our external keypad and this is one that I picked up on Amazon. However, the design is in your owner's manual if you want to build one for yourself. Again, it's a tip ring sleeve and it is right next to where you plugged your keyer in and it's labeled external keypad. So that goes in here. The final thing that we're gonna plug in. Ah! You didn't plug it in. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't plugged in. Yeah. Yeah. It was right over here and these are USB connectors. And if you've got a wired keyboard or a wired mouse, you can plug that in to those USB connections. If you've got a wireless connector, you can plug the receivers in. And it does not matter which one that you plug in. If you've got one of those combo sets where you have a keyboard and a mouse in a single setup, then you can just plug your receiver here and it just plugs in here. You can use either port. I'm gonna go with the lower one, just like that. Okay, now we're on the front panel and I wanna just point out a few buttons that I'm going to be using. After this particular segment, the control head video will disappear and we'll focus only on what's happening up in here. We're gonna start by talking about the front panel menu button. This is different than this menu here. Let me give that a push and you'll see it brings up this screen and we'll go back. The next one is our functions which is right next to the menu, and we'll push that and it brings up our functions. We'll get out of that. The next button is right here. It's called APF TPF. APF is your auto peak frequency and it's used for CW. TPF is your twin peak frequency that's used for RIDI. Now we're going to go to our mode setting. Right now I'm in single sideband, lower sideband because I'm in 40 meters, and I'm gonna press that and go to CW. Another front panel button is right over here. It's right on the corner of your main tuning knob. When we get to using it, I'll describe what's happening. To set our frequencies, there's another tool that I use, and I'm gonna pop that up here, and this is my ham clock. I've got several videos on the ham clock, 
and I'll put a little flag up here in the corner and if you go there you can find out about the ham clock and find out how to use it and what it does but this gives me an inkling I don't have the slightest inkling of what you're talking about of what frequencies would be best for me to use we'll discuss the main tuning knob this is our main tuning knob over here and I can adjust the frequency here I'm still up here in the SSB section of the band I want to press the megahertz section, so right now we're reading 7 megahertz, 219 kilohertz, 765 hertz. So we're going to press the megahertz. We're going to press F input, because this will get us there quickly. And I'm going to press 704000, and we're going to go to 7 megahertz, 40 kilohertz, and 0 hertz. We're going to enter that and you can see I have some CW signals I'm going to adjust my span which is right here and it toggles through I'm right now plus and minus 25 kilohertz and we're just going to toggle through and the next one will take me down to plus or minus 2.5 kilohertz and one more time we're going to go plus or minus 10 kilohertz and from here I can start searching the band. You can see I have a CW signal over here and you can by pressing the monitor or I'm going to use my mouse to come over here and select this signal and I'm going to turn up my sound. And here I'm going to press my auto tune. I'm going to go a little off center. Press my auto tune. And you can see it's actually zero beat my signal using the autotune. While I was at Hamvention, I stopped by the ICOM booth and took a look at a few of the rigs. In particular, I spent a long time looking at and playing with the IC7610. As I had just purchased the 7760, I wasn't in the market for a new rig, but soon I found myself checking out the ham radio outlet and checking the show price on that radio. Soon my credit card took a hit and I left the show with this radio, the IC7610. Needless to say, you can expect some future videos about that rig once I've had a chance to play with it for a bit. In the meanwhile, if you're enjoying this content so far, please take a moment to chunk that thumbs up icon and give me a like. I like the show. So now we're going to go to our settings and we do that by pressing our menu button and select set. We want to go to our CW key set and there are a number of menu functions that you can set. We're only going to look at a couple of them. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to look at our key type. I'm going to press that and you see I have a straight key, a bug, and since I'm using a paddle, that's what I selected. The mic up and down keyer is really useful because you can turn that on, and I'll show you how that works in a second, and we'll just back on out of here. And now that we're on the front panel tuner, I'm going to press that APF key, and you see that the APF indicator comes up on the screen right here. Because I set my rig to allow the microphone up and down keyers, I'm going to push the button on the left, which would be the down button, or the up button. Now I'm going to press my function button, and we're going to talk about break-in. Break-in has two settings, and by the way, you can turn your APF on and off here. I'll go ahead and do that. See, I'm off and watch for the indicator and I'm back on. But break-in has three settings. Break-in off. If you just want to practice your Morse code without transmitting. So you can see that I'm not actually transmitting. Break-in on has two settings. In break-in, you're going to transmit when you first hit a button. As long as I'm pushing a button, I'm on the air. My TX stayed on the whole time. You can adjust how long it'll wait before it switches back to receive by pressing and holding the break in. That brings up your delay and you can use your multi-key to adjust that. Let me take it way up here 
and you can see when I hit, it stays up a long time. I find around 10 is a good number to use, so let's just, just adjust that to around 10. You want to adjust this for your own comfort level. Now the final setting, and I'm going to close out my pop-up menu, is full break-in. Anytime you hit your paddle or immediately after transmitting goes back. So Now that's very useful for instance in a contest. If you're sending a CQ message and somebody starts to come back on you, you can immediately stop sending and listen for that person. Now I'm going to exit out of this. There is a button underneath your display that says exit. You can use that to get there. You can also just push the function button again and it'll clear or you can press the exit button and it will clear. Now I'm going to take a second and go ahead and hit my antenna switch and go to antenna 2. Antenna 2 I have going into a dummy load. So you can see everything has gone away and uh, from now on I'm transmitting into a dummy load. Pressing the multifunction knob brings up your RF power. I've got 20 watts coming out. And the next one down is your key speed. Right now I'm at 20 words per minute. If you're not comfortable there, you always want to transmit no faster than you can receive that. So we're going to turn this down to 10 words per minute. And that's a good point to start for someone who's learning. CW pitch is the next on the bot thing. Your CW pitch is your side tone. This is the tone that you're going to generate. And when you use the auto tune button that I showed you earlier, that's the tone that it's going to adjust to. I like 800 hertz. Some people think that's too high, but you want to adjust it for your comfort level. This is 800 hertz. And let's go ahead and adjust it down to 500 hertz. So you can adjust it for where you feel comfortable. In other words, your mileage may vary. Many of the people who came up to me to visit told me they make a point of sharing these videos with their friends in the ham radio community. Thank you for doing that. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to share. Sharing is fun. This video with your friends and cohorts in the radio community, especially on social media. In this segment, we're going to take a look at recording and playback of CW messages. And we have several ways we can do this. Our setup remains. We're in the CW mode and I'm plugged into a dummy load. I'm going to go to my functions and I've got my break-in set to full break-in. We'll exit out of here and just hit my key to show that I am in fact transmitting. To get to the recording, you want to push your menu button. It brings up this menu. You want to go to the keyer and we're going to select the keyer and this brings up the keyer sending. All of these are defaults that are preset by ICOM and we're going to go ahead and edit this. So I'm going to click on edit set and I'm going to click edit. I'm going to select my M1. I've got my keyboard installed here, so I'm going to use my keyboard and I'm going to move this over to the end and I'm going to just backspace out of this and we're going to send a standard CQ message. So we got CQ in there already, so I'm going to go add CQ, 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 DE, ND, 3N, ND, 3N. And that's there. For this next demo, I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to pull my wireless keyboard and mouse out. So I've reset my radio by turning it off and turning it back on. And now it knows that I don't have a keyboard in there. So now I'm going to select M2. I'm going to back on out of this just by hitting the clear button. And I'm going to enter just my call sign. To get the numbers, you click that. And to get back to the alphabet, you click that. And we'll enter it again. We're going to press the enter button. Now that I have my call sign entered in M2, what we want to do is get rid of these up arrows. Those are there because the previous one in M2 and the current one in M5 has a count up uh, for using in contesting that requires a serial number. So we're going to get in there. We're going to hit our menu, we're going to hit our key here, 
I'm going to go to edit set. I'm going to go to 001 set and our count up trigger is here and it's showing M2 and M5. So we're just going to deselect those and we'll go back. You'll see that it's now not selected. So now I've lost that carrot. For playback, you can just press the button and it'll play it back. If you get halfway through and you want to stop, you can just press it again and it'll stop. For my call sign, we'll just press that. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video and a special thank you to those who searched for the red hat at Hambenchen and took the time to say hello. 73 until the next hey y'all. This has been a Hamshack chat about CW on the ICOM IC7760. I'm Tom, ND3N, just like it says on the hat, and I am out. Refreshing. Refreshing.